Ich träumte von bunten Blumen, so wie sie wohl blühen im Mai. Ich träumte von grünen Wiesen, von lustigem Vogelgeschrei, von lustigem Vogelgeschrei. There is no need in our world for dreaming. We have the world in our hands and the power to shape it and direct its destiny. But this requires some care when the ice age transition begins, which may be upon us when the snow no longer melts, or when it melts far too late in the summer for the fields to ripen into harvest. Then our wonderful botanical world that we cherish will be in danger of becoming lost. If this occurs, many of the amazing species that we've developed and cultivated with great care and to some degree depend on may vanish forever together with our warm climate. Much of what we presently cherish is thereby about to disappear for more than 90,000 years under ever deeper blankets of snow that eventually become ice sheets thousands of feet deep. Then a great loss will occur if this happens, and it will happen unless we care to protect our living heritage that is without doubt the greatest treasure on our planet, which also includes us as a part of it. For this reason we will take the needed steps. Most of the biosphere of our planet, which we depend on in numerous ways, is primarily botanic in nature. Thus, the more we discover of its dynamics, the more we recognize that we need the botanical world, and that we need to protect it. We need the botanical world not just as a source of food and oxygen, but we might also depend on it for the electromagnetic environment it creates around it in which we live, all living processes create an electromagnetic environment that is actually measurable. Apart from aesthetic aspects, this living environment may be the reason why we like to plant trees in our cities and maintain forests wherever we can. We even bring plants inside of our homes and surround our homes with gardens. It appears that we may need plants far more than we yet imagine. This means that we must also create an extensive protected environment for the biodiversity that our existence on this planet is intertwined with. We must protect all that we are a part of against the Ice Age cooling. For this reason we may need to create living heritage gardens and forests if need be in indoor environments, just as we protect our agriculture. This apparently essential biological protection can be accomplished by the same principles and processes that we need to create to protect our food supply. The inclusion of the biodiversity protection should therefore be a part of our intention as we prepare our world for the coming Ice Age transition. The idea of protecting the biodiversity of the Earth is not a new one. A vast seed vault has been built in the high Arctic to protect the basic seeds for our food supply from possible pollution, runaway biological engineering, and also the effects of nuclear war. While many seed collections exist throughout the world, most are in unprotected environments. The high Arctic seed vault solves this problem. However, seeds have a relatively short lifespan in the range of hundreds of years, up to a thousand years, with the deep cold ice age glaciation cycles typically extending for 90,000 years. The protection of our biodiversity cannot be achieved in the dormant mode, but needs to be protected in a living mode. Building a living environment in an ice age world is of course a vastly more extensive task than simply building a vault and laying up seeds, and we really need to get on with creating the advanced stage of protection, because the transition to the next glaciation cycle promises to be not a smooth one according to the nature of our electrodynamic universe. In fluid dynamics huge oscillations occur when a drop of water impacts on a still surface. Likewise in electric circuits, unwanted oscillations occur when an electric pulse meets the parasitic capacitances and inductances that are inherent in such circuits. The same also happens on the cosmic scale, where similar large ringing has been observed in ice core data at the major transition periods in the form of large temperature oscillations. In the ice core data large and rapid fluctuations have been observed in the range of up to 20 degrees Celsius.
most of them spanning relatively short periods in the range of decades while the changing climate system settles down at its new level. Experiences in electronics tell us that we should not expect a smooth ice age transition, but one with massive oscillations throughout the climate system during the transition period. We might have already seen some of the forerunners in the form of climate variations that have not been seen for a long time, if ever. The climate oscillations will primarily be felt in the high latitude regions, where the great ice sheets had accumulated and permafrost had disabled the landscape during the glaciation period for 90,000 years. This disabled zone is known to have extended from the poles all the way to the 40th parallels with an enormous impact on agriculture and biodiversity. It threatens to have deadly consequences for mankind when the food supply infrastructures in these regions become disabled. The affected regions north of the 40th parallel are currently the world's prime food production regions. When the production becomes disabled in these regions, the loss occurs over a wide area simultaneously. In such a case we better have an alternate food production infrastructure in place and up hand running. If we fail on this, a large portion of humanity will not survive for the lack of food, if indeed anyone will survive the food wars that may follow. If we wish to avoid a catastrophe, we need to compensate for the loss of the northern agriculture before it happens, by activating the southern deserts, like for example the Sahara. This can be done. In the case of the Sahara, with fresh water diverted from the outflow of the Amazon River carried in floating archery submerged in the ocean, to Africa. Likewise the outflow of the Mississippi River can be diverted across the Gulf of Mexico, to the nearby American deserts. The technologies and materials to do this, do already exist. We can develop Africa into the new bread garden of the world and build floating bridges across the oceans to enable and operate the Africa Development Project. The materials and the technologies for this do likewise exist. It is also possible to develop fully contained indoor agriculture, kilometers wide, stacked 50 stories high, operating with artificial sunshine and artificial environments. Sunshine contains about 500 watts of energy per square meter. Of this the chlorophyll in plants absorbs only 2% in narrow bands. 10 watts per square meters in artificial light tuned to the absorption bands might be sufficient to facilitate indoor agriculture on a large scale. It would be powered with nuclear power. Fully contained indoor agriculture is just one of the advanced options we have available to us for breaking out from the traditional platform for growing food in open fields. Such facilities would be useful right now in marginal climates. We can also build infrastructure for floating agriculture to be laid across the tropical oceans, for which the intercontinental bridges would serve as a transportation link and also as a link to the new floating cities that then would become a part of the new agriculture. Such projects too are easily accomplished with automated industrial production and nuclear power. Eventually our advanced infrastructures would be powered with cosmic electric power, replacing nuclear power. Cosmic electric power surrounds our planet in space. This vast resource is presently unused, but it is available. The vast resource of cosmic electric power presently powers only tornadoes, hurricanes, and lightning. As a resource it appears to be far greater in volume than we will ever be able to use. Also it is a resource that is constantly self-renewing. However, in order to be able to develop anything, especially to build the large-scale infrastructures that we need to meet the Ice Age challenge, we need to break out of the bleak and presently frozen stone-hard status quo in thinking. We need to break out from this especially in economic and political thinking and adjust ourselves to get on with building what needs to be built to meet the Ice Age challenge, or else we'll die by the forces that we thereby fail to respond to. If we fail to respond, as a consequence, the wonderful botanic and biotic world that we presently cherish will largely disappear together with most of us as we'll fight deadly wars over the rest of the world and the remaining food resources by which the world becomes largely depopulated. There is nothing ideal and desirable in the mythological heaven of a largely depopulated world in which only a few million people remain alive. This kind of world tends to be bleak, terrifyingly primitive, and is endlessly plagued by hunger. 
this is not the kind of fate that a rational human being would wish to come upon it, nor is there an imperative for it. The human world, the world that we have created for us, is incredibly rich. None of what we live on, and have become, is the gift of the earth. We have created every aspect of it by merely utilizing the natural principles, which we then extended further, and further to levels of development and productivity, that are far greater, in most cases, than what the natural primitive world has achieved. We have cultivated all the trees that grow us the fruits we eat, and more marvelous fruits that did not exist before we creatively intervened to enrich the productive capacity of the natural processes. In order to enrich our living with them, we took the biosphere under our care and gave it a helping hand to become productive for us. We also produce the food for the animals that nourish us. The natural system provided the principle. We utilized the principle and expanded its processes with our creative and productive potential we have created for our living and for our enjoyment what no other living species has been able to create by far. We created an entire culture for living in which we are able to grow and develop and become scientific and artistic and expand our horizons. We built cities where living is more than just existing, cities with schools, universities, industries, sports, theaters, enjoyments, and markets. We have also made the botanical world more productive and beautiful things which we bring into our homes to enrich our innermost world with. We have even combined the creative power of nature with our own creative power and gave it a dimension it never had before on its own or would likely ever have. We have also extended the beauty and diversity of nature into our own creations, creating shapes and colors and reflections that were never seen before until we produce them. We have created countless types of art with the best of our own expressions that we have produced to beautify our homes with. We have also created art with an eye towards expanding our imagination and to challenge our imagination towards seeing more than what the eye beholds. We have even created art strictly for the fun of it. For when life is uplifted, there is fun in living and in seeing ourselves in humorous dimensions that draw on ironies. We also produce music for one another, an art that expresses the principles of our soul. Sometimes music can be a platform for coming together and for learning from one another and sharing ideas. We are an incredibly creative species to the point that we create not only our own environment for living and for working, but also create tropical environments in the cold northern world for nothing more than to be able to enjoy tropical birds there and plants without having to journey halfway around the world to see them. We have become creators of worlds. We are even changing the environment to suit our needs so that we can grow food where nothing would grow before. We have become builders of worlds with resources that we have mostly produced ourselves. We have the capacity to project this process into the future to fully meet the challenges of the coming Ice Age climate and to come out richer. But here in this critical arena, as we face the greatest challenges that we have ever faced, our progress is presently blocked. It is blocked by financial thievery that is crippling us and has trapped us into impotence.